this little sensor, the Acara FP2, is a true game changer for smart home automation, unlike anything I've used before in HomeKit. It's a true occupancy sensor and a light sensor, but it's capable of so much more. For example, I can trigger multiple HomeKit automations to happen based on where I'm at in my room, not just motion alone. So you can see here automation is being triggered by me moving around the room in and out of different zones. It's truly incredible. There's so much to talk about. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Shane. If you're new here and this channel is all about building an easy Apple home smart home with new videos published every Sunday and live streams every Wednesday. Thanks to Akara for sponsoring today's video and sending me their brand new FP2 present sensor. I've been excited about this one and I've been able to use and test this thing for a few weeks now and it has really blown my mind. It's like I said, unlike any motion sensor or occupancy sensor that I've ever used with HomeKit. And that's because the FP2 is not like most motion sensors. The FP2 uses something called millimeter wave technology that's actually much more effective for most automations than you know your typical traditional PIR motion sensor. For example, PIR sensors cannot detect small movements like when you're just sitting at your desk or watching TV. Also, PIR motion sensors can't distinguish between you know, multiple people in a room or different zones. This Acara FP2 fixes all of that. It supports HomeKit, Alexa, Google Home, and even Home Assistant. The FP2 supports multi-person detection, has a built-in light sensor that is exposed to home kit thankfully it supports fall detection and alerts and zone positioning they say that it filters out most false positives triggered by robot vacuums small pets plants and fans and of course the one major benefit like i said is that it can detect those micro movements like just sitting on the couch or laying in bed that type of thing and don't worry i tested this a lot which we'll get into in a minute a car says it's ipx5 rated which means it can be used in humid environments like bathrooms or even certain outdoor areas probably covered and somewhat protected i'm sure the sensor is wi-fi based but connects to your acara hubs allowing for acara home and home kit automations that involve the fp2 to execute locally and again the kit Kicker for me, at least what I'm really excited about is that those zones you create in the Acar app are all exposed to HomeKit as separate occupancy sensors. That's right, that means that we can create HomeKit automations with multiple zone triggers in the same room, just like you saw in the intro of this video. Truly incredible. So let's unbox it and set it up. First, we're greeted with the sensor upon opening the box. We have a USB-C to USB-A cable, some mounting screws, and two metal mounting plates with included 3M tape. That makes mounting this thing super easy since it does have a magnetic base, so you can stick it directly to something magnetic or easily use the included metal plates. To plug it in, find the USB-C port under the base, and we'll also see the HomeKit code printed here on the back of that little stand. Once you plug in the cable, you can completely collapse the mount for a flush installation if you need to. Open the Acar app, tap add accessory, and choose the present sensor FP2. Now the app will add the device to our Apple Home. So I'll choose the correct home since I do have a few of them. Scan the HomeKit code, choose the room to place it in, rename it if you want to. And you'll see this will initially expose two new sensors to our HomeKit home, the occupancy sensor and the light sensor. Once done, it will automatically start binding to the Acara app and then you're all done. Move through a few prompts in the Acara app and then we're all set up. Now, when you open the device in the app, you'll go through a little installation guide that you can follow or you can skip if you want to. There's a few ways to mount the FP2 and how you mount it will actually determine some of the features that you'll be able to utilize. You can mount it on a wall, directly on the ceiling or in a corner. 
And of course you can tilt it and you know angle it to get the most accurate motion detection for your space. Since I didn't want to mount mine permanently just yet, I put mine on a little tripod stand so that I could just move it around and test it out for a while, you know, before I find a permanent location for it. But uh, that's just temporary for me. I actually mounted the FP1 on the same tripod. That's the predecessor to the FP2. Uh, so this is the first version, but it was only ever available in the Chinese market. I've had one of these for a while, so I wanted to put it up here to kind of compare it to the new FP2. More on that in a minute. The FP2 can monitor rooms up to 430 square feet or 40 square meters, allows you to define up to 30 zones and can detect up to five people simultaneously. Now they do put in fine print that best result can be achieved tracking no more than three people. When mounting it on a wall, they recommend installing it at a height of around two meters or six feet. Mine was probably around five feet on the stand. Wall mount supports zone positioning and multi-person detection, but do notice the 120 degree angle right in front of the sensor. That could be a blind spot, so just something to take note of there. As you can see here, when wall or corner mounting this, you will have a larger detection range than if you ceiling mount it. But if you wanna take advantage of the fall detection feature, you will have to mount it to the ceiling. And when you do mount it to a ceiling, you won't be able to take advantage of the zone positioning features or multi-person detection. It does still work you know, as a regular presence sensor, of course, a really good one too, no matter how how you mount it so uh, but some of those extra features will depend on you know how you mount it the fall detection uses AI to detect falls and provide local and remote fall alerts a fall can sound a siren on your Acara hubs or on the doorbell chime if you have one of those and send push notifications to your phone now what's great about this type of fall detection is that users you know don't have to wear any other devices in order to detect a fall or trigger an alert like some of those other the devices that are out there on the market and you also don't have to install any cameras or anything like that so probably more of a private solution for fall detection and once you set up the sensor you can actually go in there and create the layout of your room you can create an edge for areas you don't want to monitor you can add interference sources such as fans plants acs curtains and other fixed objects that might be recognized as a person ultimately reducing false positives Adding entrance and exits helps the sensor better detect when a person enters or leaves the room. I set it up just by walking around the room and kind of seeing you know, where it detected me. It kind of has live feedback. Sometimes it's a little delay, but it's really good at seeing where you're at through the room. And that's how I kind of created my layout. You can add furniture to the room, stickers as they call them. You can also add your monitoring areas. These are basically those automation zones that we talked about earlier. I created three here in the studio for test one zone for the chairs, one for the couch, and another for my desk. You can create, again, up to 30 zones, which is really impressive. You can save your layouts as templates, which is probably a good idea in case you ever need to reset the sensor or want to move it around to different you know, areas and try out different spaces or rooms. With your room set up, you can create automations in the Acara app that are triggered by the different zones. There's even the option for presence for some time in a zone, which is cool if you want like a little delay. You can use someone is approaching, someone is going away, someone falls down, so on and so forth. I made one to play a funny sound on my Acara G4 doorbell chime when I got close to the desk just to you know, try it out. You can start to imagine the numerous possibilities with something like this. You can send custom notifications or sound alarms on your various car hubs or cameras, control lights, so many things you can do here. But of course, I really wanted to see what we could do in HomeKit. And as I mentioned earlier, you can integrate these zones into the Apple Home app or HomeKit and they'll all show up as separate occupancy sensors. There's a name synchronization option in the settings of the sensor, and you can sync the area names from the Acara app to HomeKit or vice versa. Once I do that, I can go into the Home app and see my different zone occupancy sensors. I have the chair, couch, and the desk. And using these, I was able to create those basic automations you saw at the beginning of the video where I simply 
turn on and off lights when a zone detects motion, you know, throughout my room. So you can essentially have automations that trigger lights as you move through a room on and off and stuff like you saw. And since these are so good at detecting small movements once motion is detected, if you're just sitting on the couch or at the desk, it's still going to show as occupied while you're still sitting there. But like I said, this sensor does such a good job at this. Um, I actually have the motion sensor way back in the back of this room right now as we're speaking and I have an automation set that there's a light right here. Let's see, you see that? Uh, I've just been testing this and this light is set to turn off when no motion is detected uh, from that occupancy sensor way on the other side of the room and I've been sitting here talking to you the whole time and the light has not gone off yet. And speaking of performance, one of the first things that I noticed after I started testing this out and using this is how fast it detects motion. I honestly did not expect it to be that fast at all. I expected it to be like the FP1. If you've used the FP1, the predecessor to this one uh, that I mentioned earlier, you probably know that while it is great at detecting those small movements and knowing if you're still in the room, as an occupancy sensor should. It was pretty slow to detect the initial movement for triggering your automations. The new FP2 is much faster. I created automations that would turn on different lights in my studio with both the FP2 and the FP1. And the new FP2 would detect motion and run my HomeKit automations so fast, like literally as soon as I was walking through the door, the FP1 usually wouldn't even trigger the automation until I was already in the room and sitting at my desk. In testing it, I did sit about as still as I could on my couch and watch the whole episode or two of something and um, you know, it knew I was still sitting there. Same thing while sitting at my desk here, like I said, it's just really good at knowing um, that I'm still here even when I'm extremely still. The zone positioning is, again, truly incredible. I can't speak enough about this. As you've seen, uh, that's probably what I test out the most because I was just blown away by this. It's something that, you know, I just could never do with HomeKit automations before. Fall detection also worked quite well. I didn't test this a ton, but I did stick it up to a vent for some temporary testing since it does have that magnetic base, it was easy to just stick up there. And another great thing about this sensor that um, I should mention is that it does use just a generic USB-C to USB-A cable. So if you need like an extra long one for your installation, you can change that out with no issues. The first Acara, the FP1, had a fixed cord so you couldn't change it out. So that's nice. Anyways, I was quite impressed with the fall detection too. It seemed to notice each time I fell, including, you know, just kind of little minor falls to my knees. My daughter even came and helped me test out the fall detection. Again, the sensor detected her falls each time. Now, I did notice that if I fell somewhat hard on the couch that it detected it as a fall, but I did have the sensitivity turned all the way up. So you might want to turn that down or adjust the sensitivity if you're installing it, you know, somewhere near a couch or some chairs or whatever. You could just play with the settings to get it just right for you. And again, a car says that it does filter out most false positives triggered by things like like robot vacuums, small pets, plants, fans, and more. I didn't have a chance to test it around my robot vacuum. I did test it a little bit with my dog who's always coming in the studio. And my dog did definitely trigger the motion sensor or the presence sensor, but you know, she's not exactly a small pet. So I don't know, I assume a smaller dog or cats would be fine. Cause again, Akara says that it filters out those. The sensor gives you logs of both the presence and the light in the Acara app. And if you have the FP2 ceiling mounted with fall detection turned on, there is another log for fall detection. Each has real nice graphs and info where you can search dates and look at, you know, those levels and readings over time. Acara has stated that future over the air firmware updates will bring matter support, which is great. Posture detection, which means the sensor will be able to tell if you're laying down sitting or standing, sleep monitoring, people counting, basically counting the number of people that enter the room, and multiple FP2 sensors on one floor plan. So as amazing as this thing already is, it sounds like they're only going to continue to improve it through those firmware updates. So I know I keep saying I've been blown away, but I'm so impressed by this and the automation possibilities we can do now with HomeKit. 
I'm definitely gonna be picking up some more of these for myself. They are available to order right now. I'll put a link down below in the description as well as a discount code. Let me know if you have any questions and next you can check out this video right over here where I actually visited my grandfather and set him up with the smart home from scratch using mostly a car stuff as well. I'll have to visit them sometime soon to take them one or two of these FP2 sensors now that they're available. Subscribe for new Apple Home Smart Home videos every Sunday and live streams every Wednesday. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.